Hi and welcome to my first video on definite integration and in this video we're going to explore how we can use definite integration to find the exact area under a curve. I'm going to start with a nice simple one. So here's a nice simple function. What we're going to do first is just sketch it which might be a little bit of a reminder for you on how to sketch these functions. It's a positive x squared function translated up one unit. So it passes through here and it looks a bit like this and it's symmetrical on the other side. This of course is our y axis and this of course is our x axis. So there's our function, pretty roughly drawn, I'm sure that you all agree. Now what if we wanted to find the area under the curve between 0, we'll just do it between 0, and 2. Now it's, um, it's not overly important to note this, but just note here that 2 and then x squared plus 1 is 5. So that's coordinate 2, 5. This is a coordinate 0, 1. And this, of course, is a coordinate 0, 0. And this is a coordinate 2, 0. And we want to find the area on these. So it's the area of this shape here, where it's sort of a bounded shape between those four coordinates. But one side is curved. That's what makes it quite tricky. So previously, you've done one integration, indefinite integration. You've also looked at the trapezoidal rule and the rectangles methods. And the best way to do this is to find rectangles and add them together. And if you do two rectangles here, it's not going to be very accurate. But if you do 10 rectangles, it's going to be better. If you do 100 rectangles, better again. A million rectangles, great. How do we do an infinite number of rectangles? So if you cast your mind back to your work on differentiation by first principles, this is the same idea, but in reverse. We're going to do an infinite number of rectangles, but we're going to do it in reverse. And it actually turns out that um, integration is the way that we do that. So I'll pop it over here. We know our integration sign now. It's like that elongated s. We're going to integrate this function, uh, which is y, which is x squared plus 1. And we're going to integrate it with respect to x. This is indefinite integration. What we're going to do, though, is determine the area below the curve between two x values, 0 and 2. And so we are integrating between 2 and 0. The upper bound goes at the top, the lower bound goes at the bottom. Now there are some nuances, which we'll deal with a little bit later, but for now this is a fairly simple example I'm going to show you the process. I also want to prove to you something, and it's to do with our constant of integration. You will not need the constant of integration. Any time you're trying to find an area or a definite integral, you do not need the constant of integration, and it's really important to recognise that. But I'm going to do this one example, with the constant integration, I'm hoping I'll be able to show you how. So here's the process. What we do first is we integrate it. When you integrate x squared, you get one third x cubed plus x. And we're kind of trying to, we're building up and understanding what function will this have been to get to there if we differentiate it. That's what integration does. Now, and this is the way that I know it. I do these little square boxes, but you'll see there's lots of different notations. We're going to find, um, in fact, I'm not going to close it off yet because it's not complete, because we're doing that plus C example. We're going to find it between these two bounds, 2 and 0. So I'm going to put them on as bounds. And now I'm going to substitute those bounds in separately. I'm going to take the upper bound and substitute it in, then I'm going to subtract from that the lower bound substituted in. And this is the process, it's the procedure. Um, I'm not going to show you why, but you're welcome to go and research and read more widely why. Might be important for a complex unfamiliar, but probably not. It's a little bit beyond the scope of the syllabus for mathematical methods. So this is now 1 third 2 cubed plus 2 plus c. That's my substitution of 2. And then I'm going to subtract from that the substitution of 0, which is 1 third 0 cubed plus 0 plus c. And then I'm going to evaluate this. So my evaluation gives me 8 thirds plus 2 plus c minus 0. And this, this minus is attached to every single one. Minus 0 minus c. The c's cancel out. Move from 8 thirds plus 2, which is 8 thirds plus 6 thirds, which is 14 thirds, or of course 4 and 2 thirds. So the exact area 
exact area between 0 and 2 under this function, including the curve, is 4 and 2 thirds. And because we're finding an area, we just put units squared after it. It's important to recognise that unit squared. Now, just take a second to recognise that if I put this plus c in here, plus c, and plus c goes there, this minus attaches to that plus c though, so I end up with a negative c and a positive c, and they cancel out, and they cancel out every time, and it's appropriate to ignore them in your working completely in this process. If you're finding an area or a definite integral, you do not need to include the c. That's only for indefinite integrals where we're actually backtracking to find the function that was originally differentiated. Um, so there's a couple of different contexts there. Anyway, the series of videos that follows is going to look at finding the area where part of it might be below the x-axis or you might have negative areas, finding the area between two curves, finding the area where there's points of intersection between two curves, and some other little nuances beyond that. So we'll deal with those in the following videos, basically through example, but I'll talk about them as I go, and really practicing is going to make it better. The last thing I will talk about though in those videos as we process further is the difference between definite integration and calculating an area. It's very slight, but as we move forward and we get some negative areas, it, there is a bit of a difference in terms of the definition. So I just want you to be aware and careful of those. Anyway, all the best.